My name is Susan Hawthorne and I'm going to read today from my latest collection, The Sacking of the Muses, which was published uh, last year. I'm reading from the title sequence, which was written before, during and after the election of Donald Trump. Also happening around that time was that George Brandis was bringing excellence in the arts uh, into government policy and stripping the Australia Council of funding. So, um, the poem sequence has 20 uh, poems in it. I'm going to read uh, mostly from the contemporary line, but I've also got one that is about one of the muses, the muse of tragedy. O oh, one, sacking of the muses. The muses have been sacked. Their role in the pantheon sold up for some new real estate venture. The muses have fled, all nine of them, in a mathematical and artistic frenzy. They are downcast. What's a muse to do to amuse herself in these penny-pinching days? How can a poet expect to have her work taken seriously when profit is deemed all. The muses are unemployed, on the dole, living on the smell of an oily rag, their hearts raging. Three, muses are organising. The muses are organising. They have always been a collective and this time is no different. Calliope arrives first, eldest of the sisters. She's always in the lead. The others follow, talking about the news. Not only have we been sacked, it's worse. They have decided not to recognise us at all. White anting the arts, you can't see us anymore. We don't exist, can't be discussed. Do these governments know nothing? You can't decide not to know about music, poetry, song, dance. Our demands of tragedy and comedy could embrace this policy if only they could see and hear us. They know nothing of history. History is what happened 10 minutes ago in a newsroom in America. In spite of rockets and space probes, they have thrown out astronomy. Hobbled by her old cousin, astrology, Time to call up the tenth muse, Sappho, the world has turned, and we do remember you. Six, Melpomene, muse of tragedy. In your boots, you stomp around the stage with your knife, your club, and that hideous mask. Life is tragic enough without making it ugly too. Your sting is like that of the bee, whose honey is sweet, but the bite can kill. That's how the tragic arts are. We are all engrossed in the story. Meanwhile, our lover has died of heartbreak, or lost dreams, or serial disappointments. We all think we are immune to tragedy in our lives, until it strikes, without warning, like lightning flash, there is no way back. We are all changed by these moments when we had hoped for joy. Malpameni, sing your dirges for me so that I might haul myself up, unwrap the cloths, split the hard chrysalis, emerge transformed. Number 13. Muses are occupying. We move in under cover of darkness with our blankets for the night and sun hats for the day. We're occupying the upmarket end of town where the star arts happen under the guise of excellence. The star arts receive funding every year. They drink cocktails, they appear on television screens. We look like a bunch of hobos We've come a long way up from the dark caves. 
where we've been meeting these last weeks. So our rustic attire is intentional. We say we represent the arts at the edge of chaos, well beyond your horizon. In the darkest hour of the night, we begin our chant. We draw the spirit of rebellion to us. By morning, all that is left are a few leaves, some woven threads, butterfly wings and small red hearts. And I'll finish with number 19, muses come out of hiding. We come out of the desert, we carry desert fruits, animal friends accompany us. We are not in hiding, we have never hidden, it is you who could not see. Thank you. And I think in some ways these poems are possibly even more relevant now than they were on the days when Donald Trump first came into the presidency and COVID-19 has uh, made a tragedy of all our lives in some ways. So thank you.